Hi guys, Niall here. Welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about creation of a baffle ceiling. Uh, we were working on an architectural interior fit out today and I came across one of the ceiling variables that the chief architect wanted on the project. And the baffle ceiling families generally that you find online are very poor. Um, generally, if they are very good, they tend to be suitable for something like this, a, um, a square room. And what you do is you'd have a generic model category family that you would expand to f meet the footprint. And then it would just give you your, your fixed distance for your baffles for whatever system it was. And that's it. The problem with our particular project, uh, not this project, our particular project is much more detailed than this. But we had something similar to this whereby we had a curvature and kind of a non-uniformity to the shape of the ceiling. So all the standardized families that you might draw down from any manufacturer were not suitable for it. And it gave me kind of a conundrum of the best way of presenting it. And I came to the conclusion that the likely best way of presenting it is to use a structural beam system. And that means you can actually schedule the length of each of the baffles independently so that you can send out the drawing plus the baffle lengths to the subcontractor for them to do their design elements as well. So in the example in front, we have um, this small admin space, and it's basically a small reception area and waiting area. And as you can see, I've actually taken the view above the ceiling here. I'm not using the reflected ceiling plan because I want to show the, the footprint of the floor below. But I've taken it above the, the, the ceiling level, and we have this standard 600 by 600 square grid and our bulkhead coming around. And what we want is a horizontal baffle system across here just to kind of add a bit of style to the entrance of the building so using the beam system we can create a baffle system for the ceiling that we know the lengths of each independent baffle and we can actually vary the set out with these with just one kind of um parameter checkbox so the first thing we want to do in this instance is we want to actually set up the plane that we're going to be working to so in this instance, on the east elevation, I used RP, create my reference plane. And as you can see with the green line here, I've set up a reference plane called the underside of baffle ceiling. And I set it at 3250 above ground floor. So we're going to create our beam system at this level. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to go into your insert tab. Find it. Sorry. And you want to go load family. And obviously, depending on where you're from, you're going to have your own library to load down from. But I'm going to go down to structural framing. I'm going to go to wood. And we have all these variables for the wood. In this case, I'm just going to take dimensional lumber and press open. And I'm just going to scroll down to any size. We can change the size of this when we get into the project. Okay. So I'm going to press OK. And then in order to edit that beam size, so we have the correct beam type for or baffle type as the case may be, for the system, I'm going to press BM to bring up the beam dialog, and I'm going to select the one that we brought in. Okay, and then I'm going to go to edit type. I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to call it 30 by 150 baffle. I'm going to press OK. And then I'm going to change breadth and the depth dimensions to 30 mil by 150, and I'm going to remove the keynote because it's no longer relevant. And press OK. So now we've created our standard baffle using a structural timber beam, essentially. Okay? And what we're then going to do is we're going to go into our structural tab and we're going to select beam system. Now, as you can see, it states that a work plane cannot be used. Okay, so we're just going to close that dialog. And we're going to go into our set work plane here. And we're going to navigate down. I've already had that selected. I'm going to navigate down to the underside of baffle ceiling reference plane that we'd created on the elevation that I'd already shown you. And press OK. Now, on the left hand side, you're going to get a dialog for your beam system. And in this instance, we have 150 high, and I actually want the increments to be fixed at 150 as well. Okay. Justification is going to be center. So basically, it's going to pick the center point of the longest axis and then spread out in 150 mil centers from there okay and our beam type i want to select the 30 by 150 baffle that i've just created then for our to create the boundary of it i want to use the pick lines tool 
And in this instance, because they're baffles, we don't want them tight to the walls adjacent. So I'm going to give them an offset of 75 millimeters. And I'm just going to select the interior boundary walls. So I get my 75 mil offset. Apologies. Now, using the trim command, TR, I'm just going to neaten the corners and join them all together. So we get an enclosed boundary. Next, then we need to decide the beam direction. So as you can see, on the west wall here, we have the beam direction selected. And that means that when you have the beam direction on the west or the east boundary, it's going to run north-south. Similarly, if you want it to go east-west, you actually want to apply it to the north or south boundary. So in this instance, I'm going to select the beam direction button, and I'm going to select the north boundary because that's the actual flat, flat boundary we're working to. And once that's finished, we can press finish. And this looks like a bit of a mess, but what the problem here is it's actually after introducing the standard Revit uh, structural tag. So I'm just going to select one of them, right click, select all instances, visible in view, and I'm going to delete. And then you can see quite clearly that we have our baffle system already in place. You can see the boundary offset, and then you can see the independent baffles themselves. Okay. So if we go into our 3D view, you can see now that we have created our baffle system. This is fantastic in terms of affording you flexibility for ease of, you know, design changes for the baffle system itself. So let's say in this example, we decided that, okay, our 150 baffle wasn't sufficient and we wanted to make the baffle deeper. So we can select one of our members of the dimensional number and we can press edit type. We can duplicate and we can say that we want this to actually be 225 deep instead. We're going to press okay. Then in our depth, we're going to give it 225 to match our naming. Press okay. And then we're going to select our entire beam system and we're going to change the 225 baffle. And you can see that every variant has changed. What's also fantastic about this is we can say, okay, well, we wanted the 225 depth, but we actually want to match our fixed spacing to that 225. So we can change our fixed spacing, the 225, sorry. And now from the center point of our beam system, it will array out all of our selected beams in a 225 increment. So there's one more thing that we need to do to close this. If you remember correctly on the elevation, I had actually created the plane as the underside of baffle ceiling. Now this is an important distinction. Working from the CSA perspective, we like to work to the underside of ceiling height. If you're working from a mechanical electrical process, you may want to work to the top level of the ceiling. But I always find it's important to work to the underside of ceiling. The problem is, is that when we created the beam system, it assigns onto the plane, and then it actually emanates everything down. Because when you look at the baffle itself, the beam that we've associated to the beam system, you can see that the Z justification is set to top as default. Now there's a few ways we can resolve this. We can select every instance of the baffle, and we can change the Z justification to bottom. And you'll see it'll actually snap up. And when you select your beam system, you can see that your baffles are actually associated to the correct level now. The difficulty with this is if you actually need to change fixed spacing back to 150, let's say, you're introducing more members. And what happens is all the new members don't follow that new designation, whereby you've told them the bottom the, the, the Z justification is based to the bottom. They automatically go to the top. So you end up with a, disp a displacement of the baffles. So the easiest way to resolve this, I'm undoing both of those changes. And in this instance, I'm just going to give an elevation of the known baffle length above our underside of ceiling level that we've designated. So in this case, we know we're working to 225D baffles. So I'm going to select the beam system and I'm going to give it an elevation above its designated work plane of 225 and this in my opinion affords you the most flexibility 
if, for example, our baffle types change again down to the 150 variant, we can quite simply just select our beam system and change our elevation to suit the baffle depth and it'll snap properly. And now you know that because our beam system is 150 mil above our reference plane and we have a depth of 150 mil for each baffle that our underside of our baffles reflect the underside level we designated on our reference plane. So that's a very quick tutorial on how to create a baffle system in Revit. There's a few variants of this. Um, not all baffle systems are as straightforward as this. Not all of them have a kind of a, a uniform or a flat based, as you can see in this example. Some of them actually follow some sort of kind of organic shape or some sort of curvature whereby each baffle has a different cut profile that kind of creates an undulation across the roof, across the ceiling. So in our next tutorial, we're going to look at how we can create a baffle system when you have an undulating base. It doesn't follow the same principles as this one. We won't be using a beam system. We'll have to use um, massing families and maybe an adaptive component just to establish that. There are a few caveats of creating the baffle system in the way I've done it. So first and foremost, it's worth remembering that these are not, in fact, from the Revit designation baffles. They are structural beams. So, for example, if you wanted to hide your structure for any given reason in the architectural project and you went down to your structural framing and turned off structural framing, you're actually going to lose your baffle ceiling. So that's one caveat. Second caveat is this is not actually a ceiling. So it's not schedulable within a ceiling schedule. So the workaround for that, in my opinion, is to create a placeholder ceiling that follows the same boundary of your baffle ceiling so that it reports the area correctly, has the same underside level as your baffles. So it reports that correctly as well. But the construction material is air. This way, you will not actually see a visual representation of the ceiling in any sort of presentation view. It also means that if you have services that are ceiling mounted and you still want to use them within your baffle ceiling, you can still append them to your, you know, your air ceiling as such. They will still stick to the air ceiling. Whereas if you were trying to fix them to just the baffle, you'd actually have to go into the family and change the nature of the hosting of the elements. So quick recap, when creating a buffer ceiling in Revit, if you have a flat base, like in this example, use a structural beam system. The structural beam system will allow you to create a schedule of each and every baffle and their associated lengths that you can then pass on the schedule and the drawing information to your subcontractor for them to create their design elements. The negative consequences of this is it's not actually a ceiling. It is recognized as structural members within the Revit visibility dialogues and there, ha there is workarounds in order to make sure that it's scheduled from the ceiling perspective using an air ceiling as I've suggested. You can then append your various type properties or your parameters to that air ceiling so that it reports correctly within your ceiling schedules. So guys, I hope you found that useful. Um, if you have any other questions at all, please let me know. I'm going to follow on, as I said, with an undulating base baffle system. Um, and how you can use kind of generic models to create that. Um, you lose some of the functionality that I have shown here in terms of the, the ease of flexing the, the setout. But what you gain is the, the ability to present the, the undulating pattern and still have a cut profile for each member. So thanks a million for checking out our video. Um, it, please, as always, like, comment and subscribe. Uh, this is Niall from 8020BIM and we'll catch you again. Take care. Bye bye.